What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I am your host, as always, Kevin Coleman, at the boys underscore 22. And we are back. It's Monday, so we know we're mocking today. And uh, it's a lot of fun on this one. So we got together a little Debbie mock draft. And so what I did is I got, and we're going to go through them. We got 12 people who really know what they're talking about. Well, 11, counting me. And we went through a Debbie mock. And we did a five-round mock. Anybody that's in college football right now is available. Haven't done freshmen yet that are incoming. We are going to do that soon. I'm going to get some guys for that for the channel. Um, but anybody available right now is on there. So we did five rounds. So what I'm going to go through with you, I'm going to go through all five rounds of it. I, I've been doing player spotlight on some guys. Like, hey, here are some guys we watch. Hey, I like this value. And just to give you guys an idea where that value is right now. So let's dive into it. So let's go to the first round. So first round, not a ton of surprises. Bijan went on 101. CJ Stroud. Caleb, uh, Bryce Young, Drake May, and Travion Henderson. So a few things that kind of stand out to me. Obviously, Drake May getting in the top five. That's that's a little new, uh, and I think we're trending that way. We're going to spotlight him in a second, so I don't want to talk about too much on him. But I thought that was a, I thought that was a great pick. I mean, Matty Big Chess is the guy that did that, and he and he grabbed him there. I think the interesting one for me is Travion Henderson. So Travion has not had a good season. And he's been hurt. So I, again, you can't, he got that foot injury. It's been nagging. He's been held out. He, he has, you know, 552 yards, six touchdowns this year. Nothing great. I even tweeted out this week, Hey, Mayan Williams has been their best running back. And it's true. He has been their best running back. And Mayan Williams is getting up there in terms of draft capital now. And so it's a question is like, are you betting on, either you're getting a value here or you're just betting on name and Hey talent, right? Like they, this could be a value. Cause he was going top three, top four, depending on the drafts that you went last year. And so now we're starting to see Travion being there. So could this be a buy market for him? I think it could be, I think we're, we could be talking about, Hey, this could be a buy market um, for Travion and where he's at. So that's an interesting one, but I do want to highlight our player spotlight and a guy that in this round, and that's our guy, Drake May. Uh, you know what? He's looked phenomenal this season. When we're talking about Drake and we're talking about, hey, he could be a Heisman candidate. 253, 361, 70% completion percentage, 3,400 yards, 34 touchdowns, three interceptions. And North Carolina has a shot now. Like when you're looking at just the, the top 25 pool, they should be very close in that college football playoff with where they're at. Yeah, they had a bad loss in Notre Dame, um, but Notre Dame's been winning. So that's been, it's been there for them. Um, they're going to be right there. They have a shot to kind of run this table, beat Clemson in the ACC championship game and he, i think he could win the heisman and that's what we're talking about with drake uh there's a lot of people talking about drake being the qb1 of this class maybe qb1 of this class ahead of bryce and stroud if he was in there or ahead of caleb and what we're gonna do we are gonna on the patreon that we have for just three bucks a month me and jay stein do analytical breakdowns of these guys and we're gonna be doing a drake may versus um caleb williams and who would you rather have and you should check that out we're gonna do this wednesday you sign up for the patreon you get it for three bucks uh and all our other content that's coming out uh, so that's Drake May. Just want to spotlight him. This is the value that he has and the value that he is right now. Now, to round up the rest of that first round, we have Jameer Gibbs at 107, Jordan Addison at 108, Jacqueline Smith and the Jigba at the 109, Zach Evans at the 110, Quinn Ewers at 111, and 112 is Braylon Allen. Um, yeah, I, I thought, again, so when you're looking at this, I can kind of talk about my pick, Zach Evans. I'm still based on that on value in terms of him being the running back three of this class, but he's got to produce, and, and obviously Judkins is doing better than him. Quinshaw Judkins, we're going to mention him in a little bit. Um, and so I think that's a question mark, but that is just NFL level talent. I think what you're looking at there, if you're, you're still taking Zach at that uh, level, Jackson Smith, the Jigba again, kind of like Travion hasn't played hamstring injury. How much is that baked into his ADP? Um, do we trust him going forward? There's some question marks about him being able to play on the outside. Is he just a slot guy? Right? So we're starting to see kind of these, these question marks pop up for these top guys and even the top guys that were in Debbie last year. So this is that format of Debbie, which can be very difficult, right? Uh, then we have Jordan Addison, Braylon Allen, Brown out to the 112. I think Quinn Ewers being at the at the 111 is a I don't, I don't want to say it's a head scratcher because you're still betting on value and talent but again he has not had a good season he has not looked good this year uh they just lost the tcu where he went 17 for 39 again 171 an interception against oklahoma state 19 for 49 three interceptions there he has a 55 percent completion percentage Quinn is not doing very well. And I think with Debbie quarterbacks and the track record, he is not a guy that I'm going to draft in the first round right now. There's just too much value around where that's going, um, especially when we talk about who got drafted in the second round. I'm not taking a shot on Quinn Ewers at the at the 111. Um, just based on that, just I'm worried. Like, I, I believe in his talent. I think it could be there. Um, but you're swinging for upside, and it's very, very risky in this type of format. Now, I do want to have a player spotlight here, um, and that's our guy, Braylon Allen. You know, when you're looking at what Braylon is, uh, I don't know. There's been some rumors about him on the transfer market, uh, and it kind of just depends on what that coaching search looks like and who they hire. 
Uh, but you know what? There's transfer rumors out there, and they talk about maybe going to Michigan next year, these other areas. I would love for him to come to Michigan. Come to Michigan, Braylon. But even if he doesn't, when you look at what he's done this year, 180 attempts, 1,029 yards, 10 touchdowns, uh, receiving is never going to be there. So the thing about him, when we've talked about him over and over and over as, a, as an asset for fantasy, you need to understand his limitations on the receiving side. Uh, he Up until last game, so against Northwestern, Michigan State, Purdue, and uh, Maryland, he had 100-yard games and against an Iowa defense that's probably one of the toughest in the country. 40 yards rushing. So we didn't see that there. I still think he deserves to be in here. But again, he's not my running back two of this class. So I wouldn't have taken him this high. But I do understand grabbing him here at the 112 based on talent there. My running back two actually goes way, way later. And we're going to talk about that, which is crazy uh, to me. But that's the that rounds out the first round. So just to give you guys a look, there's the first six picks. There's the second picks, and there's our spotlights. All right, let's jump to the second round now. And the guy that I cannot believe went in the second round, I think if we did this again, he wouldn't. But Marvin Harrison Jr. right there at the 201. That was an excellent pick by Noah Wright. Uh, then you got Nicholas Singleton, Quentin Johnston, Kendra Miller, Quinshawn Judkins, Emeka Ibuka, Brock Bowers, Xavier Worthy, Michael Mayer, Raheem Sanders, Sean Tucker, and Kayshawn Boutte. And, and, you know, I think the biggest value kind of surprises to me just in terms of where they're going now. So we're going to talk about the dips. Kayshawn going at the 212 when he was probably a top five pick heading into the season. Uh, you know, when looking at Michael Mayer, a lot of people liked him earlier. This tight end premium, not going there, right? Brock Bowers, again, 207. Okay, that's pretty average for him. He hasn't seen an uptick in his value there, but him going tight end one over Michael Mayer. I know some people had that going into the season, but we haven't seen that. Xavier Worthy has dipped a little bit. Part of that can be attributed to that Texas offense like we talked about with Quinn. Uh, Kendra Miller shot up to the 204. I mean, that's a big shoot up for value there. Quentin Johnston there. Should he have gone in the first round, depending on where his draft capital is? I know we just did a mock draft for football guys, me and Christian Williams, and we and I think Quentin was uh, wide receiver one at, at the 108, the eighth pick in the draft overall. I think it was to the Bears. So when you're looking at what, or not the Bears, somewhere else, Jackson, Jacksonville, I believe. Uh, and, and that is interesting, right? Singleton's right there. He's getting up in that first round territory where he should be in terms of just value, right? And then Marvin Harrison Jr. And that's the guy we're going to spotlight here because he's been absolutely phenomenal. I don't know if you guys saw that picture of him almost tearing his hamstring, but catching it, keeping it in. You need to go see that highlight if you haven't. This kid is probably wide receiver one of, of overall. Like, I, I, I do think that there is an argument to be made that he should have been drafted ahead of Jordan Addison ahead of Jackson Smith ahead of all those guys in that first round just because when you're looking at value I think that he should be there and then in terms of this in not mock he was wide receiver three but he could have been easily wide receiver one and I think he should have been in the first round and he's been absolutely phenomenal just just overall value everything that he's been able to do this year um, you have to give him there and I think He's a player that you, if you drafted, you were, you were ahead of the game. We did a this or that series, me and Anthony Corinthian on the channel, uh, before the season started, and I said, hey, you might want to take Marvin. I like Emeka Ibuka, but you might want to take Marvin. And look at this, and he's, he's really benefited from JSN not being there and getting, that, and getting those reps. So if you can get him in the second round, man, that's a hell of a, hell of a value there for him. So just to pop up the second round so you can see it again uh, before we get over to the next round. Okay. All right. Let's look at the third round. So we have Josh Downs, 301, Tank Bigsby, 302, Will Shipley, value of the draft of the 303. So shout out to Ernest here. I'm um, getting him at the 303. 100% love that pick in terms of just value. He's my running back. Two of the class, pass catching. We saw him last night look very good in terms of what he's been able to do in a poor Clemson offense that does not do very well. Slow developing offense for running backs. He's looked very good. He's at 100, 899 yards and 12 touchdowns this year. He's a pass catching back hasn't really seen that too much but he's there man he's got the size there i love that pick for you blake corm at the 304 donovan edwards two michigan boys back to back interesting there uh then branson robinson freshman from jo or freshman from georgia he's going to be a sophomore that's why it's labeled there luther burden zach charbonnet jalen hyatt Evan Stewart, Drew Aller, and Mario Williams. So this is where we started seeing the freshmen in there. So again, remember, Branson's a freshman. Um, and we're seeing kind of where these guys are going there. And, and, I, and I think that's interesting. Aller being the first quarterback, freshman quarterback up the board. Uh, we haven't seen him too much. Evan Stewart we've seen, but is he going to stay in that Texas A&M offense? Jalen Hyatt, is that a little early to be taking Jalen Hyatt over Evan Stewart, right? So just in terms of value, Luther Burden right there, right? So this is where we're starting to see those guys where you – projecting potential, especially that wide receiver class there. I do love the Josh Downs pick, and that's the guy we're going to highlight and spotlight here in a minute. Uh, and I think one other area to talk about, Tank fell down. Tank used to be a first-round pick, late first, early second. Now we're seeing him in the third round, so that's something to know. Now let's do a player spotlight here on Josh Downs, 5'10", 175. You know, if you're watching this uh, on a Monday, we're going to have a Josh Downs breakdown on Wednesday. So if you're if you're here on the channel, if you watch this a little later, there is a Josh Downs breakdown, and I, and I go through everything with him, film breaks and everything there. Uh, this season has been good. He's, he's a little hurt. 
uh, beginning of the year, knocked him out a couple games, but 74 receptions, 847 yards, 11 touchdowns. He's looked very, very solid this year. And, you know, just depending on like where you think of his draft capital at, um, I, you know, I have him in the first round. I think just based on talent, uh, talent alone and what he's been able to do, I mean, I think you have to get him in there. Um, and he's been solid. I think he can play on the inside and he playing the out probably. Um, and just his last three games, four games really have been phenomenal. Uh, you know, came back Duke 126 yards. Then he had Pitt 102, then UVA 166 on 15 catches, 11 exceptions against wake for 154 yards. He's been phenomenal this year. All those touchdowns we've seen, like he's the guy that Drake may has been going to and reason why he's in the Heisman candidate race. This is, this is area here. If you can get this kid in the third round, reminiscent of kind of like a Jahan Dotson type type area. I think that's pretty good value in where he was going. All right, let's go to the fourth round. So we're looking at the fourth. We got Will Levis. Don't draft Will Levis. Don't, don't do it. Just it's done. Don't draft Will Levis anymore. Move on. Uh, Devin Chain, why uh, running back from Texas A&M. Again, I like this value. I mean, he's small. I think that's the question mark. If he was a little bigger, he'd be going a second first round. Troy Franklin. We're going to highlight him. Uh, 403, 404, Devin Neal. Interesting pick. I like it still. Uh, Ja'Cory Brooks, 405. Kate Kubik, 406. J.J. McCarthy, 407. 408 is Jatavian Sanders. Marvin Mims is a 409, 410. McMillan, 411, Anthony Richardson, and 412, Hinton Hooker. So interesting values here across the board of where people are drafting guys, right? So we're talking about the fourth round now, looking at builds. I took Troy here because I, I, I love Troy, and I think that he's a value at this spot. Um, but some other areas here, like Kate Cobb McBean at 406. Okay, what are we projecting him going forward in Debbie? I want to talk about Jatavian Sanders, though. I, you know, I, I had this in the Discord, in the Debbie Royale Patreon Discord. I said, hey, w taking Jatavian feels like more of the play than taking a guy like Brock Bowers or Michael Mayer. But I, I, I pinpointed Michael Mayer. Michael Mayer is probably ceiling as Fryermuth from the Pittsburgh Steelers. And that's okay. Like, that's fine. Hunter Henry type area. But why wouldn't you just draft? So if we're looking at that second round where he went, so let's let's just talk about it. So you see Michael Mayer there. You have Raheem Sanders. You have Keishon Butte. You have these other guys. Xavier Worthy's around there, right? Um, why not draft like that guy, right? Or even in the third round, let's say you take a Josh Downs ahead of that. Why why would you take Mayer, who has a limited, maybe a cap ceiling, right? Especially at the tight end position, which we have realized that tight ends don't matter. Just ask Kyle Pitts. When you could just wait, take the best player available, and then in the fourth round, take a shot on an athlete like Jatavian Sanders. He's had some drops at Texas. He hasn't looked, he's looked okay this year. Um, but I think that's where I would take the value play. I would pass on Mayer in the second go after Sanders in the fourth. And I think I think that's something to note when we do these drafts of where the value lies and, and kind of where we should be concerned about there. Uh, Marvin and Mims obviously is there. And it, these other guys, you're taking some shots in the quarterbacks at the end down there um, with, with guys that you like. Now, I do want to spotlight somebody. And that's Troy Franklin. We've talked about him enough. I've talked about him enough. 6'3", 178, 10 games this year, 475 yards and six touchdowns. Uh, he's looked very good for um, Oregon, and he's their big play threat. It just in terms of what he's been able to do on that on that Ducks team, he's really come out of his shell. He's really ascended to wide receiver one. A 775 yards, like I said, he's seen his targets go up against Washington in a must-win game. They did lose by three at five catches, 139 yards and a touchdown. He is averaging 17.6 yards of reception. He you can tell that he can he can definitely fly. I, I love this kid in value. Like this could, I mean, realistically, we could be talking about him as wide receiver two, three four in that area, right? Get him in the fourth round. I'll take that all day. All right, last round, fifth round, and we'll get you guys out of here. Um, Israel Bonaconda, 501, John Emery Jr. I love this John Emery Jr. pick. This is my guy right here. Tom Otten uh, took this pick, and it's just, uh, we can't quit him. Can we, John? We just can't quit this guy, or Tom. We can't quit this guy. John Emery has the talent. I do think the NFL is going to like John Emery. He hasn't necessarily produced, but he's out there, right? Jay Knott, freshman from Cal, Jermaine Burton, Keon Coleman, Rakeem Jarrett, Jadon Blue, Katrin Allen, I still think Allen may be ahead of blue there. Cedric Tillman, Kendall Milton, Antonio Williams, and Chase Brown. Really, really like that uh, Antonio Williams pick. By the uh, great pick there. Now let's let's do a player spotlight of, of some guys. And that's Jay Knott. We've talked about it on the channel. If you haven't seen it, I did a breakdown for him early in the year when he kind of went off. I think it was against the Arizona Arizona game. 139, 745 yards, seven touchdowns. But I think the value where he is at is his receiving ability, guys. Like 35 catches, 219 yards receiving, 6.3 yards reception, seven touchdowns on the year. Like very, very solid kind of producer here. I think he's someone to get your eye on in terms of where you're at. Like, would you rather have him or Kendall, right? So some someone took Kendall a little earlier than I probably would have, even though it was me. But I would have probably thought about Jay Knott right there, uh, thinking about, hey, where are these guys at? 
And, and just in terms of, hey, go grab him, right? Go grab these guys and don't waste your picks. Like Chase Brown, I like Chase Brown. I think he has the volume there. Maybe go a little bit higher upside. Uh, but those are the guys. So let me go through the rounds, and then we're going to talk about where you can find everybody. So this is the first round. Just to give you guys kind of look, there's the rest of the first. Here's our second. Here's our third. Here's our fourth. And there's our fifth round, Devi Mock. So I appreciate you guys. I wanted to kind of highlight the participants so you can find all these guys. That's their Twitter names in there. But also you can find their work. Some of them are definitely are content creators. Uh, but they're all great followers. Go follow them on Twitter if you're on there. Um, and, and you can kind of follow their work, especially guys that are part of the Debbie community. So we appreciate you guys tuning in. Hit that like button and subscribe button. Let us know what you guys think. Who was high? Who was too low? Where, where do you think these guys are? Do we believe in these freshman quarterbacks? Club Nick, Drew all are these guys? Or are we a little bit worried about it? Would you still take Quinn in the first, right? So give us give us some ideas. Let us know what you think. Um, if you like college football, you like kind of Debbie, those type of things, we have a Patreon. It's only three bucks a month. Um, subscribe to that. You can find that below. Um, until then, we will see you guys later. Keep checking out that channel. Make sure you hit that sub button. We appreciate you guys.